Vikramas, India's first privately developed rocket successfully lifted off from the space port in Sriharikota on Friday, marking the foray into the pri- off the private sector into India's space industry dominated by ISRO for decades. And it was a textbook launch as Vikram S, India's first privately built 18-foot-high demonstration rocket, put three payloads in the suborbital space at an altitude of 85 kilometers, lifting off from Sri Harikota. A project of Skyroot Aerospace, a Hyderabad-based startup by two IITians, the core part of the vehicle was made of carbon fiber, a first for India. It had first of its kind 3D printed engines, besides other cutting edge technology. Advanced technologies like 3D printing, in fact it has four 3D printed engines which give the spin for the rocket. And uh, and then like it has like several uh, avionics which is like miniaturized, next generation cutting edge technologies. Skyroot has already raised 526 crore rupees funding. The launch cost is cheaper than the US or Europe. With plans for a series of mega commercial launches scaling 500 km altitude, it aims to make satellite launches as simple as booking a cab. It's more about value creation in this industry than valuations. Uh, this capability proving will of course uh, make, make us stand uh, steadfast in our capability uh, and be able to express uh, uh, to the investor community that raise more funds. The government says around 150 startups, including ISRO vendors, now want to get into building of rockets, satellites and ground stations. It denies private entry would slow down ISRO. So no one should ever think that ISRO's role in space sector will diminish. Sky is not the limit. That's the promise India gives as it opens up its space program for private players. Even as this would unravel a world of possibilities, the big challenge for ISRO in the long run would be to stay relevant and competitive. At Sri Harikota, with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Findy TV. And now more revelations in the Shraddha Valkar Aftab Punawala case. Shraddha was killed and dismembered by her partner in May this year and her body parts were disposed of in different parts of the city. But now evidence has emerged of a pattern of abuse that ended up in murder from two years ago. Disturbing evidence of beatings, photos, WhatsApp chats and medical reports have revealed an ugly reality. Two crucial pieces of evidence unearthed in the investigation of the gruesome Shraddha murder case. Bruised cheeks, cuts on her face and swollen eyes. Images of 26-year-old Shraddha Valkar from 2020, nearly two years before she was murdered brutally by live-in partner Afta Punawala. Medical reports from December 2020 when she had to be admitted to a local hospital in Mumbai for severe back pain and neck injuries show signs of her being beaten up. नहीं जब ऐसा शक लगे कि ये असोल्ट है ट्रॉमा है लेकिन पेशेंट को ऐसे एक्सटर्नली इंजरीज नहीं थे और जब तक पेशेंट हिस्ट्री नहीं देता है कि कुछ असोल्ट हुआ है तो फिर अन्य सिक्योरिया में ऐसा नहीं करें तो किसी ब्लंट ऑब्जेक्ट से वैसे नहीं मिला था पेशेंट को अर्ली स्पॉन्डिलाइसिस जैसे सिम्टम्स मिले थे to further prove that Shraddha was trapped in an abusive relationship Shraddha's chats with her friends from November 2020 have now emerged in these chats Shraddha's helplessness is evident she can be seen telling her friends that she is low on energy after the beating. She is also talking about approaching the police and the women's commission with complaints of violence and abuse. In one of the screenshots of the chats between Shraddha and her manager, she is seen sharing her picture to prove she is unwell and cannot go to work. Shraddha's friends have gone on record to say that she confided in them about the torture and abuse that she had to bear. वो बोलती है मेरे जान को खतरा है मेरे को मार देगा मेरे को मेरे जान को खतरा है मेरे को मार देगा तो भी वो मतलब बोले ऐसा ठीक है तो हम लोग पुलिस बोलते हैं भाई करने के लिए वो ये इस बात के लिए भी वो डर रही थी एक्चुअली क्या है कोई अंदर से बहुत डर था पर वो एक्चुअली खुल के बात नहीं कर रही थी हम लोग और वो कम से कम वो डिप्रेशन में थे एक्चुअली ज्यादा कर मीनवाइल इन दिल्ली द पुलिस रैंप्ड अप द इन्वेस्टिगेशन आफ्टर गेटिंग 5 मोर डेज ऑफ आफताब्स कस्टडी नियर अ कॉल सेंटर इन गुरुग्राम वेयर आफताब लास्ट वर्क the Delhi police recovered, among other evidence, a heavy polythene bag. 
which has raised more suspicions after Aftab has confessed that he had disposed Shraddha's body parts in as many as 18 polythene bags. Today, Aftab Poonawala also gave his consent to the narco test. The police hope that crucial information will be revealed in this narco test. The coming five days are going to be crucial as far as the investigation of this case that has sent shockwaves across the nation is concerned. With Sunil Singh in Mumbai, Vedant Agarwal for NDTV. And in an obvious reference to Pakistan and China, Prime Minister Modi on Friday said certain countries support terrorism as part of their foreign policy, while some others support it indirectly by blocking action against terrorists. The Prime Minister targeting those countries who harbour and support terrorism even indirectly, calling this a proxy war. The obvious targets, Pakistan and China, had sent no representatives for this, an Interpol meeting against financing terrorism. All terrorist attacks deserve equal outrage and action. Further, sometimes there are indirect arguments made in support of terrorism to block action against terrorists. There is no place for an ambiguous approach while dealing with a global threat. Proxy wars are also dangerous and violent. There must be a cost imposed upon countries that support terrorism. Recently, China used its veto at the UN to block efforts to declare Pakistani terror leaders Hafiz Talha Saeed and earlier Masood Azhar as global terrorists. Hafiz Saeed is the mastermind of the 2611 Mumbai attack and Masood Azhar of the 2001 parliament attack. Lately, the opposition has been targeting Prime Minister Modi, alleging he has been soft on China. At the Interpol ministerial meeting, Home Minister Amit Shah equated terror organizations like the Lashkar and Jash to the Al-Qaeda, even the ISIS, and said that they all work in tandem. However, significantly, he says that terrorism cannot be linked to any religion or nationality. Bharat, terrorism ke sabhi rupo aur prakaro ki ghor ninda karta hai. Hum sabhi mante hai ki terrorism ka khatra kisi dharm, rashtriyata ya kisi samu se juda nahi ho sakta. India is using its own security lens to highlight issues of how it has been a victim of terror before the world. Issues like darknet being used for crowdfunding is also being discussed in this meeting. In New Delhi, with camera person Ashok Mahale, this is Neeta Sharma reporting for NDTV. And the big story, former Telangana top BJP leader BL Santosh has now been summoned by the Telangana probe team over the alleged attempt to buy KCR's party MLA's. Uma Sudhir has all the details. So Uma, the BJP uh, uh, TRS uh, battle going, uh, being fought on many fronts, this on a day when we even had a BJP parliamentarian's home allegedly vandalized. Yes, indeed. What we understand is that the special investigation team that's been formed by the Telangana government and which was in fact, uh, uh, in a sense, ratified saying that the judge, single judge bench of the uh, single judge of the uh, Telangana High Court would oversee the probe. That SIT has in fact summoned Mr. B. L. Santosh, who happens to be the National General Secretary uh, Organization uh, General Secretary of the BJP, on Monday to come appear before the commission at the police headquarters at 10:30 in the morning. And this is something that uh, uh, has come up because uh, B. L. Santosh's name had been mentioned multiple times. Uh, in the audio and video tapes that uh, the uh, that had come about after the 26th uh, uh, October uh, crackdown on a farmhouse where three people were arrested and they were alleged to have been involved in trying to bribe uh, TRS MLAs to jump parties into the BJP. So the uh, after interrogation also the police, the SIT also had an opportunity to uh, talk to the accused in this particular case and now they have summoned uh, Mr. B.L. Santosh to come down and appear before the police. So like you mentioned, the uh, confrontation between the BJP and the TRS in many senses growing very sharp. And uh, today, in fact, just a short while ago, Nizamabad MP uh, Dharmapuri Arvind has lodged a police complaint against uh, Kavita, who happens to be the 
uh, CM's daughter and who is also an MLC uh, who he had defeated in 2019. He has lodged a police complaint saying that her comments this morning uh, had in fact uh, been uh, criminally uh, something that was a conspiracy that was instigating the TDP workers to come out and attack his home. Uh, it was in fact a day of uh, dramatic developments where uh, uh, the attack happened on his home and Kavita also responded uh, saying that it would happen in kind that she is not going to keep quiet and then she could even slipper him on a road corner. To which again he has responded this evening uh, uh, Dharmapuri Arvin saying that he would also slipper her father. So the the uh, the quality of public debate or political uh, kind of uh, uh, exchange that is happening of very very low quality. But uh, as of now, uh, this is what happened through the day when uh, in the morning, in fact, some TRS uh, cadre went across and attacked the home of Dharmapuri Arvin in Hajipat. <laughs> Telangana Rashtra Samiti Kader today attacked the Banjara Hills home of BJP MP from Nizamabad, Dharmapuri Arvind, after he made defamatory and derogatory comments against TRS MLC K. Kavita and Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao. Otsu, Mariyada, Mariyada undale politics la. Diga zaradu, oka aada bide toni wala inta maat anpis kuna ante, e rashtram lo rajkiya lanu, brashtu batisuno anardhamai niga bate chapadan kochu. TRS leaders say what had incensed the Kader and also Kavita was loose comment and insinuation by Dharmapuri Arvind, suggesting that the Chief Minister was trying to sell or trade off his daughter, referring to a reported comment by the Chief Minister that the BJP was also trying to poach Kavita and threaten her with enforcement directorate cases. The Nizamabad MP who defeated Kavita in 2019 had even claimed that he had information that Kavita had spoken with Congress President Malik Harjun Kharge and insisted that Kavita had been upset at being kept out of Telangana Bhavan on October 5 when the TRS was renamed BRS. After the attack, Arvind said his 70-year-old mother and house staff were terrorized by TRS gundas. <laughs> In Hyderabad, with camera person Nagraju, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. And the Congress's Rahul Gandhi's remarks about the right-wing ideologue V.D. Savarkar has created friction in the Maha Alliance. The Uddhav Thakri-led Shiv Sena faction has warned that the partnership with the ideologically antithetical partner, Congress, could be at risk. The thakri Shiv Sena congress Alliance and the recent bonhomie seems to be on the brink of a breakup over Rahul Gandhi calling V.D. Savarkar, a Hindutva icon for the Sena, a servant of the British. Sir, I want to live your work. I haven't written this. This is Savarkar Ji. Veer Savarkar, we will not do the same thing about this. We will not do the same thing about this. And if there was no agenda of Bharat Jodo Yatra, के बाद आज बहुत से बड़े कांग्रेस नेताओं के साथ हमारे बातचीत हो गई हमें वहां से भी फोन आ गए लेकिन हमें मंजूर नहीं है जो भूमिका सावरकर जी के बारे में है और जो भूमिका जो कुछ बयान चल रहे उस पे है तो राउत साहब ने और कल उद्धव साहब ने रखी है आपके सामने अनदर एमपी स्पेल्ड आउट द थ्रेट इन द मॉर्निंग एंड दी ऑनरेबल संजय राउत जी हैज मेड अ स्टेटमेंट अबाउट दिस वी मे नॉट कंटिन्यू इन द एमवीए ही हैज सेड इट लाइक दिस that's just that's a serious reaction from the party. What more you want done? However, while the Congress played down the threat to the alliance, the Thakre Sena attacked the BJP Shinde Sena ruling alliance. He refuted the impression given that this issue will weaken the MBA. He said it's got nothing to do with the MBA. These are his views, these are the views of his leader. Fine. Our party has a different view, our party has a different perspective. After Thursday, demonstrations were held against Rahul Gandhi at many places in the state on Friday as well. And Maharashtra Navnirman Sena also opened a front against Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Ji, you have said that this will be a When Aditya Thakre walked with Rahul Gandhi in the Bharat Jodo Yatra, it seemed like the closeness between these two parties are increasing. But now they have locked horns on the issue of Savarkar. It's been a while when Ekna Chinde's faction of Shiv Sena and 
BJP have been claiming that Uddhav Thakre has forgotten about Hindutva and that's the reason why we see harsh reaction from Uddhav Thakre, Sanjay Raut as well as other leaders of his faction of Shiv Sena. In Mumbai, with camera person Rajendra Dayalkar, Sohit Mishra, NDTV. We're going to go in for a short break, but we have more news from around the country, so don't go away. Welcome back. Now, three months after the withdrawal of the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill from the Lower House of Parliament, the central government has come up with a new draft bill seeking views from the public on it now. The Union Minister for Railways, Communications, Electronics and the Information Technology, Ashwini Vaishnav, tweeted on Friday, seeking your views on the draft Digital Personal Data Protection Bill 2022. He also posted a link of the draft Digital Personal Data Protection Bill. The purpose of this act, the draft says, is to provide for the process of digital personal data in a manner that recognizes both the right of individuals to protect their personal data and the need to process personal data for lawful purposes. So one of uh, the new uh, uh, parts of this bill is that there's going to be an up to 250 crore fine for personal data breaches in this new bill. The new bill can, the new draft bill can also propose a setting up of a data protection board of India to administer and enforce the provisions of the proposed new act. However, there are certain aspects of this new bill that have the opposition concerned as this draft proposal gives an exemption from compliance in the case of national security and public order. Who is to define that? The uh, government entities can store personal data for an indefinite period of time. It also says that the exemption to some entities from issuing notice uh, before the collection of personal data. So there's an exemption from issuing a notice. There's also an exemption to some entities for requiring a clarification on the data that is being collected. There's also an exemption from storing data only for the purpose of collection. And Elon Musk, Twitter's new owner, on Friday said that he's not worried even as employee departures were multiplying at the microblogging platform after his ultimatum, asking staff to commit to hardcore work. The best people are staying, so I'm not worried, Musk tweeted after Twitter shut its offices due to these mass resignations. Twitter offices are shut once again as the new CEO revoked access for security badges till Monday. This after the mass exodus at Twitter when hundreds of employees quit following Musk's directive to prepare for a hardcore work culture with long hours or quit. Reports now suggest that almost 80% of the remaining employees at Twitter declined Musk's conditions and have decided to quit. This includes the core engineering teams, site reliability engineers and even the payroll staff. Twitter's internal Slack chat is said to have hundreds of goodbye messages and ex-employees have noted that the platform cannot be run without these teams. It is believed that Musk has had personal meetings with several employees to try and retain them. The world's richest man has tweeted out that he isn't worried about the platform since the best employees were staying and Twitter usage was at an all-time high. With hashtags goodbye Twitter and RIP Twitter trending, people speculate that the platform could break down as soon as the weekend. Rubina Mongia, NDTV.